What's happening guys? Welcome back to another live cash game vlog. We are back at the win for some more 510 action, but this time everyone is putting on the $20 straddle, so we're playing 51020. So we sit down with a maximum which is $3000 and pick up pocket jacks in the 20 straddle in our very first hand. So the button limps for $20, the small blind folds, the big blind completes the $20 straddle and I bump it up to $100. The button calls and the big blind gets out of the way. So we go heads up to a king for deuce rainbow board. So I decided to check here. In a GTO sense, we can probably range bet this. King high boards are really good for us. And honestly, Jax is probably a hand that wants to bet small. We get value from all kinds of floats as well as protect our hand a little. But it's the first hand of the day. I'm, you know, just getting used to things after setting up the camera and stuff. So I go for the check. Villain blasts for pot for $220. So obviously I'm not going anywhere just yet. So we call and see a turn. Turn comes an ace and I check and villain checks behind. The river then comes a nine of clubs. And I don't think that we can really bet for value here. It's a little bit too thin. So I like to check. And hoping that Villain checks back, which he does not. He very quickly shoves for 1.3k in total, which is 2x pot. So I played with this villain before and know that he's a fish. So I do give it some thought. Like, realistically, what's he repping here with this line? King 9 specifically, I think. He's not going to limp call hands like aces or ace king or, like, even pocket nines, in my opinion. So I really don't see what he can have for value aside from specifically king 9. But in saying all this, it's a 2x pot shove. I've got third pair, so I eventually let it go. So yeah, good start. Good start to the session. So this next hand is a bomb pot, boys and girls. If you don't know how bomb pots work, basically every player puts in a certain amount of big blinds and you go straight to the flop. So in this case, it's six big blinds. So every player posts $60 each. And in this case, it's flops, plural. There's two of them. So having two boards adds a really fun dynamic where you end up having to be careful even with very strong hands on vulnerable boards if you only hit one of the boards. It also creates like really unique situations when you can overbet the shit out of the pot when you hold the nuts on one board and nothing on the other, knowing that you chop at best so you can push players off a chop. For this reason, I actually think that double board bomb pot should be pot limit, but whatever, let's see some flops. So I don't check my cards until the action is on me for maximum sweatage. We have the button at least, which is great news. So in situations like this ranges are infinite because everyone can have any two cards so position becomes even more important so we see some fun boards we see ace king three monotone for the top board and queen jack 10 flush draw for the second so under the gun who is this goober wearing oakley's who looks ridiculous leads out for 200 dollars and the reg on my right actually calls out the action before it happens it's gonna be crazy this time so next to act is Nick Marchington, who some of you will recognize from his 2019 WSOP main event final table. He shoves for 3.2k total in middle position. The whale behind him in the cutoff pretty much snaps it off for about 2k or whatever he's got. And we finally peel and look at a flat tire. And it falls back to under the gun who calls all in for $800 total, claiming that he has a big hand. I have a monster on literally both boards. The boards run out as bricky as can be, really, for two boards of this texture, and we see the hands. So Nick has Queen Jack with the Queen of Clubs for top two on the bottom board and a huge draw on the first. Under the gun has Jack 10 with the Jack of Clubs for a worse two pair on the bottom board and a worse draw on the top board. And inexplicably, the whale who snapped it off has King 10 of Hearts, so he's got middle pair on the top board and bottom pair with an open ender on the bottom board. Somehow a king is good on the first board, so Nick and the whale chop the pot. So if the last hand is anything to go by, this game is fucking sick. Definitely one of the best games I've played in in a long time, and without question the best 5-10 game I've ever played in. So a few hands after the bomb pot, we look down at pocket 10s. The king 10 whale guy limps for 20, decent reg on my left, ISOs to $70 and we make it 200 on the button. I think I'd flat a reasonable amount of hands here. I don't really want to squeeze out the whale, but I think 10s is a hand that's just going to play better heads up. The action falls back to the whale who cold calls the 200, and the reg folds, which is literally the dream scenario. Flop isn't as dreamy though, bringing in an ace alongside an eight and a four. The whale checks, and I go for the check back. In hindsight, I don't really love this. This hand's pretty vulnerable. I can still get some value from worse hands from the whale too, and I don't think that villain's too aggressive, so I don't think all of his draws are going to check raise, so we still get to realize equity even when we bet. Anyway, I do check back, and the turn comes a nine of clubs, bringing in the flush. Villain leads out for $290, and here lies another issue with checking the flop. This hand just sucks to call down now. 
So if we had the Ten of Clubs, it'd be much easier. Our check back on the flop would be better, seeing as that we now have a flush draw. But given that Villain seems more of a passive check call kind of character rather than like a blast with nothing kind of guy, I end up folding given I'm actually stone dead to some value hands. I think his cold calling range is going to consist of like suited hands, pairs, stuff like that. So I end up folding here. Not long after we pick up two red nines. There is no straddle in this hand for whatever reason. So we open to $40. Fish calls in the cutoff and the whale in the big blind comes along as well. We go three way to a 10 4 deuce rainbow flop. I elect to see bet here. It's a dry board against very sticky players. I think there's merit to betting for value as well as getting some protection. The fish who's playing a short stack now makes it 150 and the whale cold calls. So we have to let it go. So I fold and it goes in between the two players on the five of diamonds turn for the cutoff's last $170. He has ace 10 and spikes his 10 on the river against a turn two pair of the whale. He then proceeds to berate the whale for his play. $150 raise and he's falling in the pair. Is that how you play poker now? This is a guy sat with $500 at a 5, 10, 20 game wearing the most ridiculous looking Oakleys I've ever seen thinking he's playing in the World Series main event, berating somebody who's literally trying to give his money away. Piece of advice for you boys, don't tap the tank. So the very next hand, we look down at pocket queens and raise it up to $50. Both the same two players call, their V pipping a shit ton at this point, and we go three way to a flop again, and this time, ding, ding, fucking ding, it comes ace, queen, three, rainbow, and I am very aroused. Possibly the best flop I've ever seen three-way against two absolute goobers. So against certain opponents, I'd be check raising here, unblocking the top pair, trying to get in as much money as I can on the flop whilst the board is still dry. But again, given that these guys are more like passive kind of calling station players, I think just betting and building the pot myself is best. So I lead for $100. The fish snap folds, which isn't ideal, but the whale does call on the button. Turn comes the eight of spades and I continue the aggression, this time firing out a bet of $260. This guy's never going to fold an ace for this size and he can still have hands like jack 10 of spades or three four of spades that continue so there's loads and loads of hands that are going to call here but unfortunately he does fold and we win a relatively small pot with an absolute monster so the whale starts to rack up after this as well but carries on playing with his chips in the rack oakley goober on my left pipes up again is he moving leaving or just playing out of his rack? Uh, Don't worry about yeah. it. The funniest part about this to me is that the guy is giving the one player at the table, worse than himself, reason to leave the table. Don't be this guy, chaps. And the last hand of the night is a bomb pot again. So we are eight-handed. Every player posts $60 and we go straight to the flop. Or again, in this case, flops. So the boards are ace jack eight and seven nine five. Again, I'm fortunate enough to have the button. The action checks to us and we look down at queen eight offsuit. So some potential on both boards. I don't really think it's enough to start betting when we're eight handed. So I let to check back and see a turn or turns. Turn on the top board is the queen of diamonds giving us two pair and the bottom board pairs the seven. And the action checks to us once again. So I go for the lead here. I think people are very face up in bomb pots as they probably should be. Betting a strong hand on either board just for protection or equity denial rather alone is a good enough reason. So I don't think anyone's going to have a seven or a very strong piece of either board. So with our two pair on one board and we've got a gutter on the bottom, I lead out for $260 and we get the job done. Everybody folds. So just so you guys know, this is probably the most boring session that I've played. So expect all the future vlogs to be much more exciting than this with, I promise you, way bigger pots. So please, guys, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Hopefully, I'll be alternating between 510 live highlights and then 510 online highlights, 1000 NL. And so even with winning the last hand, we end up leaving the table with just over 2K, meaning a loss of $880 on the day.